Today we have the 2024 Suburban High Country. So it is the top trim loaded out. And is this the king of the family 4x4? Not much has changed for the Suburban over the last few years. Maybe next year we'll get something, but this is still a respectable, big, comfortable, and feature loaded vehicle. We're gonna take a deep dive to the exterior, the interior, take it out on the road for a test drive. Let's get started. All right, y'all, today we're gonna to take a look at the exterior details of this Suburban. So it is in a lifted height right now. I'll go through the suspension in a little bit. And this is the top end high country. So you've got the most bling up front and bling all around. It's a really nice combination of some accent pieces and overall just style. What do you guys think? So right up front, you're gonna see you get LED daytime running lights, that little hook running around there, LED headlights. No LED fog lights or fog lights at all, but you do get this little air curtain to pass through right there. Now this paint color is the Silver Sage Metallic. I really like it. It's got this like hint of green and a little bit silver, kind of depending on the light, but when the sun shines on it, it really glistens with that green metallic. You've got these bright 22 inch wheels. We even have some side steps that come down on the side as well, which I'll show you. And a little accent around the door handles and the mirror. Dimensionally, this is big. It's 226 inches long. The Tahoe is 210 inches. So you're over two feet longer and that's definitely apparent in the overall space. Um, you've got LED taillights. It's this red piece right here, but you actually get an incandescent turn signal in the back. Now, one complaint I've seen people have on this and the Tahoe is this piece running across this chrome looking accent piece right there. Doesn't bother me, but let me know what you guys think below. One other thing I want to mention with the Suburban and the Tahoe and other General Motors vehicles is the fact that the rear axle, you can get a mechanical limited slip and it works fantastic. Now, as we come to the back, the cargo area, there's a fun fact I'm going to share with you when we're all done here and compare these specs to the Tahoe, the Expedition, and we'll see just how good this space is. So one nice thing is that you get the hands-free open and close with the Suburban. It actually puts the Chevy logo on the ground like some of their other models. So that is nice. You can also open it from the inside or with your key fob. Now behind the third row, the cargo space is the biggest separation from the Tahoe, about 41 to 25 total cubic feet. So you can actually have people in the third row and shove a bunch of stuff back here. Before we dive in, we got space underneath of here too. You've got this cargo management setup. You can split different things up right here, which is nice. Keep it concealed. You even have a 12 volt power or not a 12 volt. You got a 120 volt plug 12 volts are the circular ones and then check this out one button that is missing is the ability to raise and lower the suspension but you can have it automatically set up to do that you've got slots right here to be able to cover things up you've got tie downs you've got a little net hook right there it's just a cargo net hook there's no grocery bag hook i think that's a flaw but watch this go ahead and push these buttons and we can lower down each seat the headrest will also automatically fold and then look at this if you just use the second row seats tons and tons of space right here tons of height you can stack stuff up like crazy another cool thing check it out i'm gonna go boom boom and then boom those headrests also automatically fold there's a little cardboard box in the way right there so that one didn't but look at all of this space right here so much space but there's a kind of a bit of a caveat which i'll talk about in a second compared to other vehicles now in terms of total overall space 140 plus cubic feet is a ton you get so much room when you fold everything down you can fit a ton of stuff in here compared to the expedition it has more total space compared to the long wagoneer the long expedition and the long wagoneer it has more space than both of those however the much cheaper and almost two foot smaller Honda Odyssey and Kia Carnival actually get a tad bit more overall space. That's just a fun fact for you. That's the reality of minivans. So if you're getting this purely just for space, you might want to reconsider. Not to mention the Toyota Sienna, you take the seats out, you got a ton of space and 36 MPG. All right, I'm done with that. And the last nicety here, you've got a spare tire underneath and the hands-free also works to close it. Always nice if you got your hands full. Now, one nice thing is that this Suburban has the air ride suspension. So we have adjustable heights and you can have it programmed to where it's an entry exit height when the vehicle is off. So it's easier getting in, getting out and loading. So we're at the entry exit height. Let's go through the rest of them here. Okay, now we're gonna go up. 
Now we're at the normal ride height, which is what it will default to once you start driving. Now we're at the first increased ground clearance height. Now we're at the highest ground clearance level. You have to shift into four low in order to get there, but you sit up pretty high. Now, General Motors, of course, is gonna give us a smart key system. If we can focus, you've got the ability to open the back. You've got the option to remote start on here as well, which is nice, and it's a nice key fob. I like how it's not this rubberized key fob. It is plastic, but it does still feel pretty good. A Couple nice things here is, with the smart key system, it's on all doors. So you can lock and unlock the back door if that's where you go first. This button right here is how you lock it or unlock it. You can push that, mirror will fold, or when you approach the vehicle, these running boards are going to pop out. The lights on them will also shine their power perimeter boards with lighting as an option, kind of expensive, but still pretty darn nice getting in and out. Those of you with mobility issues, there's no grab handle on this side, but you will find one on the passenger side as well as both back seats. These seats are good. I wouldn't say they're great, especially for a $92,000 price tag. They're kind of flat, nothing too cushy or supportive or bolstered. They're just very, very neutral, but they are perforated leather. You've got 12-way power adjustment. If you were expecting maybe a thigh extension or adjustable backrest or even adjustable headrest, other than up and down, you don't get it. You just get your basics but it still gives you four-way lumbar support. One nice thing, you do have a power adjustable tilt and telescoping steering wheel paired with the memory settings over here on the door for the driver so you can have the entry exit system set up so it automatically moves where you want it to. One thing I like is this graphic that you get on both screens when you get in the vehicle. It's just a nice little nature scene and the high country branding. So let's go ahead and start it up. For our seats, you will find that you get ventilated seats three tier heated back or heated bottom and back i like how you can differentiate that that's pretty rare and that's something that gm usually gives you which is great like i said the seats are just kind of neutral they're not super plush and super comfortable or bolstered but they do the job and i really don't have any complaints with them and i've spent a pretty good amount of time in here as for the door panel right here you've got a nice soft material up there this wood trim right here soft here i like how you actually have a rubber mat in here which is just nice you know it just feels good storage here storage there and a slanted bottle holder here now over here you'll find that you've got a lot of control so starting here we have a trailering package so we have a trailer brake controller lighting right there and then you've got your four-wheel drive mode as well as your height adjustment right here too you can also change your drive mode, which shows up on the screen between like a, a sport, normal, off-road, and a tow haul mode. Up above that, a lot more. Parking brake, electronic parking brake, 360 camera, parking sensors, auto stop start, your lane keeping system, parking um, assist button. I'll show you that a little bit more to help you actually park. It's an advanced parking assist, downhill assist, and traction control. And then we have a head up display here as well, where you can toggle through what information there is, the brightness, and the position. Whew, that's a lot. Now, steering wheel controls kind of got your basic uh, cruise control stuff over here. This is for our Super Cruise, which I have a full demo on that with the Cadillac Escalade. So be sure to check that out. That is an option, it's an expensive option. I believe it was right around like $2,000, plus it's a $25 a month subscription. We also have rain sensing windshield wipers. Those are always nice. The audio controls like changing songs or volume are on the back of the steering wheel. GM gives us a nice large 12 inch display right here. There's a lot of information that you can see and scroll through. And this is what kind of MPG I've gotten with mixed driving, probably more highway driving, but still it's rated at 22 combined. And that's not bad considering this size of a vehicle. Now there's a lot of different stuff that you can see on here. You can even change some of the things as far as the layout. So kind of quickly go through a couple of those. This is the classic progressives, a little bit more modern looking. Digital is basically like full on, just all no gauges clean gets rid of everything on the sides and you can even change some of what you get or what you have on each side of the display 
We also have a large head-up display that gives us quite a bit of information. One thing you will notice is that we will have sensors in the steering wheel right here, as well as the sensor right there. You'll be able to see them when we're driving. You cannot see them with your eyes, but they will be flashing, and it can be a green light right here when Super Cruise is enabled, but those are always on, and it'll scream at me if I cover them up. The shifter over here is a push button shifter. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but you can also manually shift down right there. And then we've got a relatively small considering the price screen, but it's still a 10 and a quarter inch screen right here. There's a lot that you can do and see on here. You go to settings, you've got Wi-Fi on here. You can control your rear media. If you go to vehicle, then there's a bunch of stuff that you can customize and it's pretty well laid out. Another nice thing is that this has Google Maps integrated into it. I love that. It's actually finally a car navigation that works well. We have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is wireless and it looks nice on here too. This gives us a Bose 10 speaker audio system instead of a nine speaker that you get on some lower trims. And it sounds okay, but it's definitely not great. Now, one thing I think GM does so well is their 360 camera. So it's very clear. It's like a high definition type of screen. You got the dynamic line right here, but check this out. If you're next to a curb or something, you can see crystal clear where your tire actually is. You've got so many different views that you can see top down there. You've got a hitch view there as well. I have us in reverse right now and you can change the default view too. You can make there be a hitch line also, which is nice. We also have the towing package, but it's just, it's just fantastic as far as everything goes here. And then if you hit the parking button that I mentioned next to the steering wheel, you're gonna get this to pull up. So it can automatically search for spots depending on what type of parking situation you're in. This is an option. Then we've got this little hidden cubby right here. I definitely like this. I just kind of stick my sunglasses in there. It's fairly deep. Down here, we've got more physical controls for the audio up above. You've got dual zone climate control down here. Everything works pretty well. The only button I wish we had down here was a sync button because you have to actually go into the screen in order to do that. You can control your rear climate and then your seat controls down there. USB-C uh, and USB-A charging port and a 12 volt power outlet and wireless charging right here. These are better General Motors cup holders. Usually their cup holders kind of stink, but these are actually a little bit bigger. They still are very tight as far as their grip goes. So large wide base drinks might not fit, but this big giant mug does, which is good. I love GM's center armrest. I like being able to have a spot right here to put something and then still have elbow room for you and your passenger and the cup holders in the back. The center console is pretty cool. Take a look at this. You've got good space right here overall. Maybe not as deep as you were thinking, but that's because this whole center console can move. You can move this entire thing out of the way and oh my goodness, look how much space you have. Plus you have this sliding drawer. Wow. I would be scared to death. Something valuable would get stuck down there because this thing won't move, but hey, that's just me, I guess. For those of you wondering, the button is right there. It's those arrows. You can open up your lift gate here. You can fold seats down. You've got three garage controls right there. We've got our light controls. You can open up the uh, screen for the panoramic roof, which is an option. You can do it with that. Pretty nice big panoramic roof, but this should honestly be standard. It's a pretty expensive option on this high country, which was a surprise for me. But one thing that is also pretty nice is this rear view mirror. It's a camera mirror. So it can be a regular auto dimming rear view mirror or a camera mirror, which gives you perfect visibility out the back. It's really nice in large vehicles like this when visibility isn't always great because of passengers or you're towing something, but it's better than actually most crossovers thanks to its boxy shape. GM still gives us a locking glove box, which I absolutely appreciate, and a soft opening glove box. Then right here, the visor pulls out and the whole thing will slide. Now let's take a look at second row space. So first of all, one thing that really surprises me is that we don't have built-in sunshades. You don't even have a manual sunshade on this top high country trim. That's common in a lot of vehicles nowadays, minivans and SUVs but you've still got the same nice leather seats that you get up front. 
You've got these folding armrests. The headrest can automatically fold when you fold the seat down as well. And there's a grab handle to get in. And we have this upgraded about $2,000 rear entertainment package. Nice thing for families on the door. First of all, this is actually soft and comfortable both here and right here. But you've got a little storage tray. You've got room for a bottle and extra storage right there. Speaking of bottles, even a big old mug like this fits in the cup holders for easy access. These are some tight squishy or tight cup holders that don't have anything to expand but they can accommodate something like that right in the middle check it out we've got our own it's a tri-zone climate control system so this is one zone for the back seat you've got fan and temperature control you can have it on automatic mode you have a three-tier heated seat setup two usb-c ports and hdmi ports for each screen now let me uh, complain just a little bit only because of the price. I have a friend with the Palisade, and it's not the only vehicle, but the second row seats are heated and cooled. This one is just heated, and that's almost half the price. Not to mention it's got sunshades built into the doors. But you won't find this giant screen in there. You've got these two massive screens. You've got the vehicle Wi-Fi set up. You can hook up HDMI, have it set up however you want, use headphones you're just good to go. The only thing is that these can get in the way if you have kids with car seats. So it kind of takes up a few inches of space for a rear facing car seat. AC, boom, we've got a vent right up here, right next to our light. Below everything down here to keep your stuff charged, you've got a 120 volt plug so you can keep something going back here, no problem. I definitely appreciate the center folding armrest. It's not a ratcheting armrest, but then you got a ton of space to put stuff or walk through in the middle or have legs in between the seats. Now I'm five foot nine, this is where I normally have the seat. Obviously you've got a ton of space right here. We can move these seats forward. So this is all the way up and I can still sit here even though my legs are about right up against it to give the third row more room. This optional panoramic roof is also nice for these second row passengers. And one more nice thing is that you can recline these seats so you've actually got a lot of space and it's very comfortable. Now, if I wanted to go to the third row, got a couple of options. I can one, walk through the middle right there and I've had a couple passengers in here and they smoke their head on those screens. So something to keep in mind. So you can pull this and boom, it goes all the way down into the floor. Pull it again and you can lift that up. This can also help with cargo space, but look at all this room to get in. Now, before I show you the legroom, we've got one USB-C charging port right there, a little storage area, and a very tight cup holder here. However, there are AC vents back here, which are nice, in addition to these lights. So again, I'm five foot nine. This is how much space I have. I honestly was expecting a little bit more, but this chair is all the way back, whereas you could sit in the middle, because this is a three passenger third row. And look at that, tons of legroom here. And this seat is all the way up, where I could still sit and have room and you've got good space. Not a ton of foot space, but it's still pretty good. These seats still do feel kind of low, so not the most comfortable for adults, but hey, most kids and people will fit in here no problem. And headroom is good. I can sit here without even my hat touching, opposed to some luxury vehicles that might have a third row um, sunroof. This one doesn't have it, and these third row seats don't recline. Now, the one thing that makes this Suburban unique is the fact that you get the option of not just two different V8s, but you also get the option of an inline six cylinder diesel. And the interesting thing is, since this is the top high country trim, the most expensive V8 comes standard with it. So you actually get a $1,500 discount if you get this diesel. So under the hood here is the Duramax three liter inline six cylinder turbo diesel with 277 horsepower and 460 pound feet of torque. That's one of the benefits of diesel is that you get a lot of torque out of it and it's gonna be more efficient, even up to 26 MPG on the highway. So that is nice considering the size of this vehicle and you can still tow just over 8,000 pounds no matter which engine option you go with. This one or the 420 horsepower V8 both come with a 10 speed automatic, but you get significantly more fuel efficiency with this diesel. All right, y'all, let's get behind the wheel of this Suburban. So first impression here is that I've driven the Tahoe a handful of times. I don't think I've actually driven the Suburban. Now it's gonna feel very similar. It has the auto stop start, you can shut that off. But one thing to note about this diesel option that with the Tahoe or with the Suburban and the Tahoe, you generally 
correlate it with a feeling of power because you have a V8, you've got a lot of horsepower, you've got a big engine. You don't have that feeling with this diesel. It is a smaller diesel, three liter in line six, but you get a lot of torque with it. So it still makes it manageable to drive a big vehicle around. It would be great for towing as well. And it's just more fuel efficient. So this has the air ride suspension instead of the coil springs, you've got a four corner air suspension that automatically levels the vehicle and gives you a smooth ride with supposedly a little less body roll too. And I've got to say, even with 22 inch wheels, big wheels, this has been a smooth, comfortable ride. And the Suburban compared to the previous generation doesn't have a live axle back there anymore. It's an independent suspension when you don't have the air ride suspension. And that is comfortable too. Over the or improved compared to previous generation Tahoes and Suburbans. It handles bumps and dips and things like that very well for a big vehicle capable of towing as much as it can. Now, let me go ahead and hit that cruise button right here. It might not work because of the camera. Okay, we are good right now. You're probably seeing flashing lights. Just wanna show you this a little bit. Okay, it's gonna shut off because of the camera, but I have a full demo showing you what this is like to drive with Super Cruise. It is hands-off, eyes-on-the-road technology that will automatically change lanes for you. It can, um, even if you are in the left lane behind someone slow, it will automatically change into the right lane for you and then change whenever it needs to. It'll maintain a speed, it's hands-free, and when this light is green, you're good to go. I have had a couple of instances where I did not like it at all. There was a semi over here and there was quite a bit of distance in front of me. We were in like stop and go traffic. I was going 20 to 30 something miles an hour and there was a good amount of distance. The semi started slowing down and this thing hit the brakes super hard. And I thought I was gonna get rear-ended because I shouldn't have had to slow down like that. Uh, but it just nailed the brakes on me. And there were a couple other times where it just completely gave out. Uh, it warns you, but there shouldn't have been a reason that it gave out. But it's not perfect, but it is pretty nice for hands-free driving. Let me put the pedal down. So it's not the best with passing power, but if you just get on it from here to there and in town driving, it really does good and it's very responsive. This 10 speed transmission has been great as well. We even do have a sport mode. I just put us in sport mode. It's gonna keep the RPMs a little bit higher. We've got a tow haul mode as well. And I just gotta say driving the Suburban is just a comfortable experience because it's, it's smooth, you're sitting up high, and it's quiet. The one thing that surprises me though is that we don't have laminated glass right here. No sound suppressed glass with the acoustic lining in there, which is a little surprising to me. One thing about it, being a big vehicle, it does break pretty well, but it certainly feels heavy. Even still in the corners, you can feel the weight and the size of the vehicle as opposed to some smaller, lower to the ground crossovers. We pedal down with the diesel. Still gets you up to speed pretty good. You've got four wheel drive, you've got towing capability, you've got a comfortable ride, upgraded air suspension. There's still a lot to like about it. The Super Cruise is an option you can buy and then pay a monthly subscription for. And if you do a lot of highway driving, it might be worth looking into. Now to wrap things up on this Suburban, one thing that makes it unique is this diesel that gives it better efficiency while still having a good torque and towing capability. You have the four wheel drive offering as well with good ride height, the adaptive suspension, and a lot of features on the inside. So if you need a big family hauler with space behind the third row and still the ability to tow something or kind of get rugged, put something up on top, the Suburban definitely checks the boxes. But if you're like most people looking for an SUV, you're probably just looking for space. This might not be the best option when you could get a minivan for significantly less, a lot of features, and still just as much, if not more space. General Motors gets their cripple hammer out on the Suburban because they don't want it to impede on the Cadillac Escalade for good reason. But let me know what you think of this Suburban. I hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day.